I think we're back from lunch, so I'm going to say it one more time. Good afternoon. All right. Thanks for being here for uh, the afternoon of the second day of ATF's second annual Chiefs of Police Executive Forum on Crime Guns. First one, housekeeping matter. Uh, for uh, all the chiefs of police who are here, who have not yet, or sheriffs who have not yet picked up your uh, your, your jurisdiction specific uh, uh, e trace or Niven reports in the booths, please come by and get that before you go. Uh, I hope that you found yesterday and this morning uh, insightful and rewarding. I certainly know that I have, and the chance to interact together. Uh, with all of you, on behalf of all ATF, we are exceedingly grateful for. Uh, as I said yesterday, just like all the chiefs and sheriffs and law enforcement leaders in this room, everything we do at ATF begins and ends with public safety. Our mission is pretty simple, help protect the American people from violent crime. And we cannot do that without working together with all of you, our incredible partners. We are facing an extremely serious threat. A recent study from Johns Hopkins reported that more than 130 people die from firearms violence every single day in the United States. Think about that. 130 people every single day. And even more shocking, as parents and leaders, gun violence is now the leading cause of death for kids in the United States. I know that none of us in this room accept this as the status quo because it is wholly unacceptable and fundamentally inconsistent with the values of this great nation. And despite this pounding, relentless tragedy that's before us, despite all of the bad things, I am optimistic that we can make progress. And I'll tell you, after meeting with you and hearing about the work that your folks are doing in cities and towns across this country, I'm more optimistic today than I was yesterday. That is why I am very, very honored to introduce our next speaker. When it comes to fighting, fighting violent crime, the American people need a leader an attorney general with three things, a great brain, a big heart, and a strong spine. In this attorney general, Americans have all three. On the first front, Attorney General Garland's coming to this meeting is right to the point. The attorney general has not only supported the use of new and innovative tools like crime gun intelligence, to fight gun crime. He has also pushed all of us harder to work smarter together in new and creative ways all over the, all over the nation to, to make sure that these data-driven efforts are taken to their next levels. The Attorney General's comprehensive strategy to fight violent crime places our work, ATF's expertise in crime gun intelligence at the forefront of some of these efforts to protect Americans. Because he knows the importance of using intelligence to develop actionable leads. Leads that can be shared with all our state and local partners, with the chiefs here today and your departments to clear homicides. Leads that can be used to show how killers get their guns. Leads that interrupt the shooting cycle by getting shooters off our street before they kill and shoot again. The Attorney General has supported the use of ballistic technology and crime data as new and powerful tools in that fight. Just the kinds of things that this forum is all about. Attorney General Garland also has a big heart. Anybody who works with them, like so many of us do, or even sees the Attorney General interact with victims and survivors of crime, Anybody who sees him during police week, standing shoulder to shoulder with police officers, the people that you lead, knows that Attorney General has a deep connection and compassion with those who face the dangers of gun crime and those who risk their lives to protect them. And as far as a strong spine, over and over again, in the wake of killings and massacres that would test 
any normal person's medal. This Attorney General has been steadfast in his resolve to support the hard work that state, federal, local, and tribal law enforcement do every single day to support the men and women in blue, to support the men and women at ATF, to support the prosecutors who are pressing ahead in case after case to hold people accountable and to uphold the rule of law. In today's difficult environment, facing day after day, an unacceptable level of public safety threat and a threat that just keeps coming and coming, I think it's plainly obvious at this point that this Attorney General has a spine of steel. And notice that I didn't say that what we need now is a leader that just has a big mouth. Because words are not sufficient, words are not enough to deal with the issue facing the American public when it comes to gun crime. In fighting crime, Attorney General Garland understands and lives out the credo that actions speak louder than words. And that, more than anything else, is why he is here today. Because the hard, important, and innovative work being done by DOJ, ATF, and the police departments all across the nation, including the ones that all the chiefs here represent, do offer hope that things can get better. Because he has said over and over that NIBIN, that E-Trace, and our law enforcement partnerships are central to our efforts to protect Americans. And he has backed up those words with actions. He has supported those efforts. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my deep honor to introduce the 86th Attorney General of the United States of America, the Honorable Merrick B. Garland. Part of that introduction, uh, more generous than appropriate, but I'm still grateful. Thanks, Steve. And thanks for your leadership and support for the extraordinary men and women of the ATF. I know that you're now nearing the end of this year's forum, but I couldn't miss the opportunity to thank the law enforcement leaders who have traveled so far from across the country to be here at ATF headquarters this week. We have an enormous amount of respect for the work that you and your departments do every day to keep your communities safe. You are asked not only to combat violent crime, but also to serve as first responders to some of our most entrenched social problems. In doing this work, you and your officers regularly face extremely dangerous situations and bear witness to tragedy that thankfully most Americans never see. And as the leaders of your departments, you are often the ones who are asked to console and reassure your communities when a horrific act of gun violence occurs. In the wake of every mass shooting and every act of gun violence that touches your communities, even the ones that don't make headlines, people who are scared and in mourning turn to you for support and answers. The fact that these acts continue to happen in community after community is heartbreaking and it is unacceptable. All of us at the Justice Department, and especially the agents and professionals of ATF, recognize that our work together in the fight against gun violence has never been more urgent than it is now. So we are accelerating our efforts on every front. First, we are marshalling the resources of, of every one of our 25 ATF field divisions and our 94 United States Attorney's offices to investigate and prosecute the recidivists who are responsible for the greatest gun violence. Our prosecutors and agents are deploying every available authority we have to crack down on criminal gun trafficking pipelines and keep guns out of the hands of those who should not have them. 
Shortly after I, I was sworn in as Attorney General, I announced that the department would launch strike forces in five key corridors across the country to target the communities where criminal gun trafficking pipelines are bringing in illegal guns. Since then, ATF's work on those strike forces has resulted in the prosecution of 682 defendants and the seizure of more than 4,000 illegal guns, including more than 300 machine guns and machine gun conversion devices. Our prosecutions of unlicensed firearms dealing has also increased by 52% between 2021 and 2022, and we expect them to continue to increase again this year. We are also continuing to implement the expanded background check requirements and new firearms trafficking provisions that Congress enacted last year as part of the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. Thanks to those requirements, more than 200 firearms have been kept out of the hands of young people who should not have access to them. And we have already charged more than 100 defendants under the Act's new gun trafficking provisions and seized hundreds of firearms in connection with those cases. Second, we are maximizing the capacity of our grant-making components to provide law enforcement agencies and communities across the country with targeted support and assistance. Last year, we awarded more than $139 million for the COPS hiring program to enable law enforcement agencies across the country to hire additional full-time law enforcement professionals. In the coming year, we will award even more with over $224 million dedicated to the COPS hiring program. The department is also funding evidence-informed community-centered initiatives aimed at preventing and disrupting gun violence. That includes funds that allow communities to implement the extreme risk protection order laws and programs that we know save lives. Third, ATF and the entire department are doubling down on what we know to be some of the most effective tools we have against violent crime, our partnerships with all of you. Today, ATF SACs, agents, and experts are working more closely than ever with their state and local partners to disrupt the entire cycle of gun violence, from the places where illegally trafficked guns originated to the communities where the shootings are often concentrated. I want to provide just a few examples of what that partnership looks like in practice. In January of this year, there was a horrific mass shooting in Goshen, California, that left six people dead, including a mother and her 10-month-old baby. ATF San Francisco immediately responded and worked with local law enforcement, including rushing cartridge casing evidence across the country to conduct DNA testing in ATF labs. That led to the identification of one of the alleged shooters. And when law enforcement officers executing the warrant for the shooter's arrest came under fire, the ATF special response team was there to take down the shooter and then to render life-saving medical aid so he can stand trial for his crimes. In March of this year, a federal jury in the Southern District of Illinois convicted four leaders of the Gangster Disciple Street Gang for their participation in a years-long conspiracy involving drug trafficking, three murders, and two attempted murders. This conviction was the result of years of work by ATF Cape Girardeau alongside their state, local, and federal partners. And earlier this month, ATF Philadelphia and the Delaware County Drug Task Force conducted federal arrest and search warrants related to the ongoing investigation of a suspected firearms trafficker. The arrests came after a months-long operation in which agents conducted the controlled purchase of 51 firearms from the alleged trafficker. Using NIBIN, ATF was able to determine that 16 of those firearms had been linked to 27 shootings associated with an ongoing ATF Louisville street gang investigation. 
These examples represent just a small fraction of the work that our ATF SACs and their offices are doing alongside their state and local partners. I am very proud of them. These cases also make clear the power of ATF's crime gun intelligence capabilities. This includes the crime gun intelligence centers operated in every ATF field division which coordinate comprehensive tracing and ballistics analysis. It includes NIBIN, the tool that allows ATF to turn the evidence that your departments collect at crime scenes into concrete leads. Since June of last year, ATF has generated nearly 200,000 leads on violent criminals because of ballistics evidence that was submitted to NIBIN. NIBIN is an extremely powerful tool and one that gets even more powerful the more information is submitted. That is why in December, the Deputy Attorney General issued a policy requiring that all firearms and casings recovered in connection with every federal investigation, including those by federally funded task forces, be submitted to NIBIN. We are continuing to work with our state, local, and tribal partners to help them submit ballistics evidence to the NIBIN system on a timely basis. I urge all of you to do everything in your power to keep your department's NIBIN submissions as up-to-date as possible. We are also working to increase participation in ATF's eTrace program, which serves as a central online database for firearms data across jurisdictions. Now, we recognize that there can be barriers to using the E-Trace system, which is why ATF is implementing a pilot program called E-Trace Direct. The program allows law enforcement agencies that use a centralized records case management system to fully automate submission of firearms data to E-Trace. The program eliminates unnecessary paperwork by automatically generating a trace request any time firearms data is entered into your standard case management system. We have successfully deployed E-Trace as a pilot program in partnership with the Kentucky State Police, and we are now expanding it to several other federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies. All of our U.S. Attorney's offices and ATF field divisions have also designated coordinators to work with our law enforcement partners to tackle the threat of ghost guns. This year, ATF has established a division here at headquarters dedicated to supporting these coordinators in each field division. And it has updated its regulations to make it harder for criminals and other prohibited persons to get their hands on these untraceable guns. That work will continue. As I said at the outset, all of us at the Justice Department recognize the urgency of our shared work to protect our communities and our country from gun violence. We are sparing no resources to hold accountable those who perpetrate this violence, as well as those who put illegal guns in the hands of violent criminals. We recognize that so much of the work to combat violent crime falls on your shoulders. We are committed to doing everything we can to provide you with the partnership and the support that you need and that you deserve. Thank you for coming to this year's forum, and thank you from the bottom of my heart for all that you do for your communities and for our country. Have a good remainder of the day.